This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere, Wednesday, September 16th, wherever. And however you're connected, great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with beyond half-court basketball analyst, Jerem Jordan. First off, Viva Mexico, uh, Independence Day in Mexico. So shout out to uh, the Mormon Colony's homies, the Romney brothers, uh, Baylor and Gunner for that. But Cosmo, he he is a trick shot artist. So not only was it the dancing, the Ao and Teo, the ice on the wrist and everything, Cosmo is now a trick shot artist, I think challenging Jimmer Fredette for Trick Shot Tuesday. So this came out yesterday from BYU Cougars. Cosmo in the Marriott Center Annex doing a front flip and then chucking it into the bucket. Oh, my gosh. Bang! Wow. That's incredible from Cosmo. I don't want to know how many takes it was, but I bet it was just one. I'm going to assume it was one because he's Cosmo and he's the goat and he's the number one mascot in America. Yes, he's not a goat, but he is the goat. He is the goat mascot that is a cougar, if that makes sense. And you would know a thing or two about impressive length of the court or near length of the court shots. Uh, from me personally or calling the one? What are you referring to? I am referring to uh, the Mike Hall Orem High School. Not the Mike Hall that people uh, from BYU yeah. are thinking of. Yeah. Uh, but Orem High School is Mike Hall 2006, was it? Yeah. So story time. You and I work, uh, our students at Brigham, going to school in the comms department. But on the side, we were doing games for Provo and Tiffy High Schools on a small local cable access channel called iProvo with our boy Dan Ransom. So you went to Vegas to look for a job at a uh, convention. So I got upgraded from analyst to play-by-play. And I call this like 80-footer 80, 80 from a kid named Mike Hall at Orem <laughs> High. Bronson Kafusi's a sophomore. It happens against Timfew. And it goes in, and I'm like, oh, my God! You can look it up on uh, YouTube. Timfew Orem, last second shot. Got like, this is in 06. Remember, YouTube's young. Got like 100,000 views quick. So that, <laughs> yet to this day, that's the most viral thing I've ever been a part of. So I peaked very early in my broadcasting career. But I felt like that should have been your call. No, no. But you were gone. So thanks for that. You, you're welcome. Uh, no, really, it's <laughs> it's a, it was a crazy. It's my shot, pleasure yeah. to leave so that you could call that epic shot and uh, get and then, on a Fox Sports show nationally. Yes, and, uh, the best dang best sports darn show, sports show darn period. Sports show period. Uh-huh. They did the top fifty greatest basketball shots of all time, but then they threw that one in there honorably mentioned. I was like, "What the heck? This is awesome!" <laughs> so that was that was. We can fun. confirm been, there was only one attempt on that shot. There right? was, yes. Uh, you've been on Sports Center a few times, though. The top tens, Lexi Eaton, and whatnot at the. Half court buzzer banking in. Yes, been, thank you, Brigham. Jason Shepard uh, calls the Houston game. Boom, he's on Sports Center. Your boy has not been uh, had a call on Sports Center quite yet. Although there have been volleyball plays in on the there, top ten, but not they didn't have my call. Apparently, the call wasn't good enough. It's bound to I'll happen. I'll work harder. It's bound to happen. We've yeah. got great energy going on this show. Cosmo starting it off always appropriate, and we're keeping the energy high with the lineup today. Is there any real chance? that BYU and Army square off in football this season. Kenneth McMillan, beat writer for the Black Knights, on why all hope is not lost for a first-ever meeting between the two. In Army or not, is BYU legitimately trying to play a 12-game schedule? Is that even possible? Plus, Stuart Mandel, editor-in-chief of the Athletics College football page on what the Big Ten return means for BYU's place in an ever-changing national landscape of college football and pursuit of a special season. Here are your Wednesday BYU Sports Nation headlines. Army football coach Jeff Monken says the Black Knights aren't committing to play BYU right now. Quote, we would love to play that game. They're a great team. It would be a great opportunity for our program to play a team of that caliber. If we could do it, we'll try to do it. Right now, we got our schedule pretty set. More from Munkin later. There are two available dates in theory when this game could be played, November 28th and then possibly December 5th. The Big Ten Conference is back in the game of college football. In fact, the Big Ten presidents voted unanimously to resume fall football. The approved plan includes an eight-game season and a conference championship game after that to place the power conference in line for a hopeful college football playoff berth and certainly consideration. 
The Big Ten season will kick off on October 23rd. Of note, any players testing positive in this conference plan will undergo extensive cardiac testing and sit out a minimum, a minimum of 21 days before return. Wow, that's a long time, but they're uh, taking it uh, very safe, right? The NBA announces the draft to take place on Wednesday, November 18th. Yoli Childs was invited to the Combine virtually and is projected as high as a second-round pick. So let's hope that uh, Yoli does his thing and presses on and off the court and uh, becomes a draft pick. If not, I think there will be plenty of opportunities for him. There's a date. Who knew the NBA draft would be happening a week before Thanksgiving? That's wild. It, it is it's wild. It's a crazy year. The craziest year we will probably ever experience. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. BYU football holding out hope for an Army strong rescheduling boost to the 2020 rundown. But based on the comments of Army head coach Jeff Munkin, we're not feeling overly confident a would-be first-ever game with the Black Knights will happen in 2020. Listen to this 60 seconds from Coach Munkin, and you can postulate on your own. We've, we've discussed it, uh, but it's not something we're, we're committing to right now. I think we've got to look at where we're at here in a, a couple of weeks down the road and, and just see what happens with the rest of the football season. There, there's certainly a lot of unknowns and a lot of possibilities that uh, as we, we get into the weeks to come and we look at, uh, at the other games, particularly the CIC games and, and the effects of, of what may happen with this virus and what we need to do with each open weekend that we have, I think we've, we've kind of got to consider that. So uh, we would love to play that game. They're a great team. And uh, it, it would be uh, just a great opportunity for our program to play a team of that caliber. And, and if we can do it, we'll, we'll try to do it. But uh, right now, we've, we've, got, uh, we've got our schedule pretty set right now. Okay, a couple of notes. When he references CIC games, that stands for Commander-in-Chief Games against Air Force and Navy. And secondly, if they want to play the game, then why haven't they scheduled it already? Yeah, I, I was kind of waiting for him to s- thank the Deacons uh, there for a sec. It sounded like that, but it didn't happen. I, yeah, if you want to play the game, why not reschedule it? Is it going to happen, Jerem? Uh, I don't feel like it's going to happen, not after that commentary. Although at the end, it was kind of like, eh, but uh, I, I, don't, I don't see it happening. Um, d- does Army think they're going to get a better game later? I think it'd be BYU that thinks they're going to get a better game. But Kalani Stake's comments and uh, tone were pretty clear on Monday that really frustrated that – one, BYU couldn't play the game, COVID, you know. Two, that it hadn't been rescheduled. I don't know why this game isn't rescheduled for November 28th right now. What's the holdup? It feels like uh, there's something there that isn't being said. And I, I don't know if that's Army. Uh, Reno Mahe uh, tweeted at me yesterday. They didn't want that smoke after watching the uh, Navy game. Listen, BYU played a heck of a game against um, against. Maybe. And if you're Army, you're like, whoa. But Army, I think, wants to smoke because look what they did in the first two games. They dominated. They were ready. They do play Cincinnati next. Yeah, we'll find out what they're really yeah. about against Cincinnati. I think Cincinnati is the best team on the schedule. They are on to Cincinnati, Jerem. <laughs> Literally on to Cincinnati. No, we're on to Cincinnati. <laughs> now, we, we put the full schedule in here with all the bye weeks. That's the most full schedule we've ever shown on this program, ever. And I dare say with that template. It's a beautiful thing. Well done. I don't know why this isn't scheduled already. I think it's really weird. I don't think Army wants to play the game. If you want to play the game, reschedule the game. What, what are you waiting for? That's a great question. What are you waiting for? And I'm with you, leaning towards no, because Army doesn't want the BYU smoke specifically in late November at the end of the season when who knows what injuries they're dealing with and – They could be in place to do something special if they have zero losses or one loss to a team like Cincinnati. They're nationally ranked still. And they still know they have the game of games with Navy on the docket for December 12th. That'll be there no matter what. If I'm Army, I kind of get it. It's like, I don't know that I want to play BYU on November 28th because they are a high-caliber team, as Coach Munkin just said. And of when it would have to be played. That, to me, is the reason that this has not been scheduled, because of 
the timing. Like if Army had an open date on November 7th or November 14th, I think that the game would already be rescheduled. Wait, what's the difference with the 28th? You think being two weeks out from Navy's Navy is an issue? At the end of the season. It's two it's weeks. It's Thanksgiving weekend. Maybe they want it off. That means Maybe they nothing want to these guys. Maybe they want two full weeks off to prepare for Navy. I they will have two weeks even if they play BYU on the 28th. If the game's on December 12th. What? I, I don't understand why it's not scheduled on the 20th. I don't, I don't get it. Does Army think, hey, we got a better chance at maybe being invited to like a New Year's That's Six? That's what I'm saying. If, if they do, they have to be undefeated, and they will, they'll have the same issue that BYU, we've been discussing with BYU. They only have one game, uh, maybe two, that matters on the schedule. They do. Cincinnati and Air Force. Navy, we hope, matters. The way that Navy played in the first game, it may not matter. But it matters to them, of course, as a one-off. I'm talking when the, co- when the new college football playoff committee is looking at who could be an at-large to the New Year's Six. Remember, Army is like BYU, independent, choosing to not have a conference affiliation. Yeah, the, the, there would be an issue. I think if they play BYU and Cincinnati and Air Force and Navy and win all those games, it's like, okay, you, you're pretty good. You're legit. We'll yeah. know how legit Army is after we see them against Cincinnati. Right. That's going to be the real litmus test. Right. And... Maybe after things don't go so well against Cincinnati, then they really don't want to play BYU. Or maybe they're leaning towards, oh, we need a quality win, so let's put BYU back on the schedule because we didn't get it in Cincinnati. Right. There's this massive gap, right, between playing in the New Year's Six and not. There just is. If BYU doesn't play a ranked Army team, they'll likely not play any ranked team in 2020. Yeah. Which brings us to our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. The last time BYU football did not play a ranked team, either ranked at the time of the game or in the final AP poll, was 1987. It's been a long time since BYU didn't face a ranked team during the week Mm -hmm. or any team that at least finished ranked at the end of the season. Right, and who knows what bowl game BYU is in, and maybe that team is that team for BYU, but... You play the regular season to get into a good game. So we'll see. Listen, if you want, in 2014, BYU didn't play any good teams, really, right? Um, I, I guess Boise State and Memphis, um, you've done that research. If BYU wants a great season, don't play a tough game. In 2001, Jeremy, they didn't play any <laughs> ranked teams until the bowl game, number 23, yeah, Louisville. That's how you go 12-1. and one. They were still in the until conversation. They were in the controversy topic. So I don't think it really matters. Just win, and you'll be in the conversation. Yep. Topic two, the Big Ten expected to return in late October and around December 19th, becoming the seventh league among the 10 FBS leagues to play this season and increasing the number of teams participating from 77 to 91 out of 130. So how will the return of the Big Ten affect BYU football? My first thought was this immediately impacts BYU's chances at a New Year's Six game. And when I say that, I'm with you. I just have to put on <laughs> like, no you know, It's still crazy. No you have to always want to know. It's alert. just such no a long shot, alert. but maybe, maybe. Th- thinking about maybe. the Cougars in a New Year's Six scenario, even when 77 teams are now 91 with the 14 additional from the Big Ten playing, it's just wild. But now there are probably one, maybe two fewer spots available in New Year's Six games. So there's... Maybe three. Ah, because man. if you think Ohio State's going to the, the semis, that means at least one, if not two. And, and, and there were six Big Ten teams in the AP preseason poll. So I'm going to take these off now because they're just absolutely ridiculous. 14 more teams playing, bringing the total to 91. 14 more teams vying for a top 25 ranking. And, and let's be honest, there's like six legit teams in there. You know what I mean? That Maybe are top more. 25 Maybe caliber. More. Right. Look, Ohio State, Penn State, Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota, and Iowa. So this, this affects BYU in a great way. I think one, we don't know the answer to this quite yet, but when will the AP poll start using Big Ten teams again? Is it in late October when they start? Is it October 23rd? Or, or is it next week? Uh, because then BYU's not a top 25 team. They don't deserve to be. If the Big Ten's involved, is but Ohio if, State going to be one and zero and ranked number two or three? And everyone else five and two. BYU's five and one and ranked twenty first. It's going to be it's yeah. so crazy. It's going to be weird. It really is. All that said, Jerem, I would rather the Big Ten play because you know oh, what? college. I want, football, I want everybody to play. College football is just better when Ohio State, Michigan, Wisconsin, Penn State, and the other ten programs are involved. It makes the college football season feel 
more normal, more legitimate. Yeah. You no, know what? No People doubt. are like, well, what about the Pac-12? Pac-12 hasn't really made any noise in the college football playoff basically since its inception outside of Oregon. So right. uh, I'd rather I, have the I, Big Ten than the Pac-12. Listen, I lived on the West Coast until uh, you know I was 11, and so I love the Pac-12. I do. I wish BYU was in the Pac-12. Like, I'm a huge fan of the Pac-12. Like, I grew up thinking about Oregon, Oregon State, Washington, Washington State, and all that. I wish the Pac-12 was playing. I feel I, bad for all of the players. Right. I, and I wish that uh, BYU was in that league. I, I, I do. That's the perfect fit. We always talk about the Big 12. It's actually the Pac-12. Just the majority of the BYU fans in the country live in, obviously, Utah or the West Coast. There are a ton of awesome fans in the Central and Eastern time zone. Don't get me wrong. But it's, it's not realistic to play in a league in those time zones. That's what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, th- this does affect BYU's ability to, if BYU went undefeated, blue goggle alert, <laughs> get into a New Year's Six. It, it, it does, because there are fewer spots, right, available. If BYU's undefeated and they had enough quantity and good enough quality, question mark, then maybe they have a shot. And if they don't, then, hey, you win every game and you did your best and you, you could only do what you could. Because what, is, what has BYU done this year? One, that they're playing is awesome. Two, Tom Homo's trying to put together something, right? I, I would be surprised if BYU doesn't add games in November. They have one game scheduled right now. It is so obvious that BYU is going to add games in November. Yes, they'll add at least, at least one more game in November. If not two or even three, who knows? Is Army one of them? We don't know. But uh, I'm excited to see what BYU can do, if it means they plan something special. That at the end, we'll see. The Big Ten certainly hurts those hopes if they exist at all. But college football as a whole just benefits. So it's, yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah, Pac-12, let's go, man. Welcome back. Let's, let's get those terrible fires under control. What's so the, the, the Mac going to do? Mountain West said they still have Mac no game plan, they said. The we're yeah. no plan, yeah. Crazy. Question of the day. How important is it that BYU plays Army this season? What kind of impact will it happen and why? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At COT underscore BYU Football Answers on Twitter. I think it's more important just to play, especially for the athletes. We were looking forward to the Army game, spoken as a fan, but as long as BYU gets to play, that's what matters. So is there a collective feeling across the fan base that uh, even if they don't play Army, just play a game, just get another game. That's all that matters. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Again, Quality, quantity is more important than quality at this Well, juncture. BYU got a quality game against Louisiana Tech. I think that's a good game. Yeah, it's a good game uh, for us. Nationally, that's not a game that will pop. But Louisiana Tech won 10 games last year. There you go. Coming up, the latest odds for BYU in a New Year's Six Bowl game. Always changing. <laughs> and Kenneth McMillan, beat writer for the Army Black Knights on if he thinks BYU and Army will reschedule. Is all hope not lost? This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Get to know the Cougars beyond the field and court. Watch episodes of Deep Blue by searching for it on the free BYU TV app. We are live in Studio B. This is your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. Spencer Linton teamed up with Jerem Jordan. And it is our pleasure now to welcome in on the Desert First Credit Union Hotline. He is a beat writer for the Army Black Knights for the Times Herald record. Ken McMillan joins us and makes his BYUSN debut. Ken, great to have you on the program. How are you? Good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Man, I wish uh, BYU and Army were playing in West Point this Saturday. That is not the case. And we saw Army and their athletic director and coach kind of put some social media messages out there saying, hey, anybody want to play? BYU can't. We're, we're ready. We're good. Uh, is there any chance that Army plays this weekend? No, not at all. Uh, they, uh, they made attempts with 20 schools uh, once they learned about the BYU cancellation and couldn't line anything up, which I'm not surprised. I mean, at this late stage, it's hard to schedule something uh, five days out. When we look at this game and the potential of it being rescheduled because uh, the, the rhetoric has been, hey, they're going to try and reschedule, are they really? Because it's, it, it feels like it's going to be difficult to do so. What, what's your sense of whether this is going to be rescheduled or not? I don't think it's going to be difficult to reschedule, to tell you the truth. The, the issue was Jeff Monk and the head coach of Army wanted to play this week uh, for obvious reasons. Army's off to a 2-0 start, playing some good ball have momentum, 
and they also had a CBS TV window um, given to them. So the, the CBS as an offer army a lot of uh, games on the big network. They do have the contract with CBS Sports Network. So uh, it would have been advantageous for Army to, uh, to, to play this week. So unfortunate that they can't. Um, I think when Mike Buddy put out his note about w seeking an opponent, I don't think he was taking a jab at uh, Brigham Young, to tell you the truth. I really think that uh, they honestly were looking for anybody to, to play. That, you know, even into the uh, the Division One AA ranks, so it didn't come. It didn't happen. Uh, November twenty eighth is still an open date for both schools. So is December fifth, but there's no way that Army is going to agree to December fifth, one week before Navy. So, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think November twenty eighth is uh, ideal if uh, both schools can agree. Why haven't they agreed on it up to this point? If both are available on that day and they do want to reschedule it. I'm not saying that they can't. Uh, I think Army was going to exhaust all possibilities to play this Saturday. And frankly, as of, I think they gave themselves a Tuesday deadline yesterday. It didn't happen. Uh, Bob Beretta, the associate athletic director who pieced together this schedule on, on the fly, uh, pretty much said they tried and it didn't happen. So uh, as of noontime here today, there is no game Saturday. I think they'll proceed forward. Uh, to Brigham Young for the end of the uh, regular season. Ken McMillan, sports editor and Army beat writer for the Times-Herald Record with us on BYU Sports Nation. If you could put a percent chance to BYU and Army being rescheduled for November 28th, how confident are you right now, and, and what percent chance would you give it? I would give it a, a very high chance. Uh, you know, I'm not a betting man, but I'll say 90%. I don't mm. see why there's no excuse not to play at the end of the year barring any more issues with COVID and things of that nature. So it's an open date. Uh, they have a contract, and Army is supposed to get a return date to uh, Brigham Young in 2032 through, you know, through this deal. So uh, I don't see why. There's no excuse not to have this game. Amen to that. And I think we were all looking forward to this one, right? It was going to be this uh, two teams that had won their games early. It was going to be on CBS, two teams that have got into the adjusted top 25. This was going to be awesome. And for BYU and Army, I think they're both seeking and, and thinking, hey, maybe something special could happen this year based on the performance early. So hopefully they can line it up. That'd be nice. Um, so give us a sense of, with Army, do they feel like this team is grossly better than last year's 5-8 and eight squad and that they could do something special this year? Uh, they don't like comparing to previous years, and obviously they were 5-8 and eight last year. They had their struggles, some mistakes, uh, but they seem re-energized. The pieces are falling in place on both offense and defense. They have a uh, an experienced quarterback back. They have a tremendous fullback who's produced four touchdowns, Sandy McCoy. Defense has Nate Woody is the new defensive coordinator. He was at Georgia Tech in 18 and Michigan in 19. And you can see a marked difference in the uh, the defense. They've got six takeaways so far this year. They're playing good ball. Now, granted, they did play, uh, you know, Middle Tennessee and Louisiana Monroe aren't exactly top 25 teams, and they weren't coming off great seasons. And there were a lot of issues with Middle Tennessee having only two weeks to prepare for playing an option team. Not a good thing for any squad. <laughs> and, and Louisiana Monroe, uh, they, they suffered through a COVID outbreak. Then they had Hurricane Laura during which time they only had one practice over 10 days mm. and they lost their defensive coordinator 10 days before the season started. So everything was working against Louisiana Monroe. So as well as Army's playing, outscoring the opposition 79 to 7, they haven't played a, a top-notch foe just yet and BYU would have been that. Sure, and they're going to get it against Cincinnati on September 26th. Uh, what was your impression of BYU football having watched them play against Navy who – like the teams you just referenced, kind of said, man, we just didn't have much time to prepare. We didn't go live contact. So how, how good is BYU and how unprepared was Navy? Uh, I was very impressed by BYU. Uh, no doubt you put up numbers like that. Uh, as far as Navy goes, I'm sure you guys have already you know, read about Kenny Niamano Olo's uh, response from Navy saying that they were kind of protecting their players. They were using tackling dummies and not having live tackling. So I don't think Navy was fully prepared and Kenny – fully admitted that too. I think if he had it to do it over, Navy would have been a lot 
better prepared against BYU. But BYU was impressive uh, and certainly will be a, a great task for any team they face this year. We've been Ken Niamatololo fans for a while. One, he's a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, so we've always had that connection, right, with him here. Uh, but he interviewed for the BYU job and whatnot. So we love Ken, but he did say the other day, wait a minute, this is unfair with the Commander-in-Chief uh, trophy that Air Force plays his two games and we got to play the whole thing. Give, a, give us a sense of how unique this season is in terms of that particular competition among Navy, Army, and Air Force, where Air Force is only playing the two games, but Navy and Army are playing what they hope is a fullish schedule. Well, let's face it. This is COVID versus tradition. Uh, the Commander-in-Chief's game has been played for, what, nearly 60 years now. So it's, it's important to have that competition. Uh, I think all of America appreciates that competition as well. Uh, Air Force and Navy have had tremendous games uh, the past couple of years. And, uh, of course, Army retain, uh, won the commander-in-chief for a couple of years in a row, which hadn't been done in a long time. So it really re-energized things here. Um, to tell you the truth, when I, when I heard that the Air Force was not going to have a, a Mountain West season, I thought, oh, well, that's a, that's a shame, especially if they were going to move it to the spring ball, which the Mountain West can still do. But then when I read that Air Force said, no, 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 we're still going to play these two games, I'm like, oh, well, on one hand, I'm saying it's tremendous. But it, then I, I listen to Coach Kenny, and I say, you know, he's totally right what he told <laughs> the, the, the Capitol Gazette. How do you – this is not like 1890 when Army played Navy and you had to prepare for one game. This is, you know, current day. And to have – to prepare an entire preseason for Navy – it definitely puts Navy at a disadvantage, especially if Navy's playing week after week. One of the things that Jeff Munkin, the reason why Jeff Munkin wanted to play this week, whether it was BYU, BYU or any opponent, is because he said, our team is healthy mm. right now. When you play week after week after week, injuries mount, situations arise, you get weaker as the season goes along. I think that's true of any football program. So uh, if, if, Air Force has a, a can go scot free and only risk injury in practice. That gives them a competitive advantage against Navy, and I understand why he was upset. Uh, but I am, I'm still glad that Air Force and Navy and Army can still play for this trophy. But Kenny's right. Uh, this is unfortunate, but you know what? Those are the cards that are being dealt. All right, Ken. Let's say hypothetically that another high level Group of Five team has a COVID scenario come up and they want to play another game and Army's like, hey, we've got November 28th open for the likes of uh, UCF or an Appalachian State. Is there any reason or is, is that a factor into maybe why there is some hesitation to add BYU on November 28th? Because maybe there's uh, another high-level opponent out there that could be added due to COVID. I don't think that was Army's motivation here. However, the opportunity is there. So uh, I don't think Army was shopping for a better opponent. I, I don't think you can get much better than what you've got with BYU. So, uh, but the opportunity is there. Uh, but I'm not, a, I'm not a lawyer. So you've already signed a contract with each other. And barring strange circumstances, which, of course, 2020 is just that, uh, I really think Army and BYU are going to face each other, but the opportunity still remains open. And as you said earlier, uh, BYU has other dates to fill themselves. So you're, you're in the same boat uh, as far as picking up opponents as the season moves along. You've made us feel better. I mean, when you said 80 or 90 percent, I just immediately felt better about life in general. So thanks for bringing the solid energy to the program today. <laughs> thanks, guys. You got it. Ken McMillan on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. Yeah, I'm really hoping they can connect on November 28th. That seems like the date, right? Uh, both have it. Army has October 31st available, but BYU has a game, Western Kentucky. December 5th, yeah, you made that point. It's super valid. Like, don't schedule a game no. before. Um, and, and in theory, if Navy's playing for the American championship, is the American title on the 5th? I believe um, so. Then – they need that open like Navy does, right? Um, and that they wouldn't want to uh, have the, a similar situation. So, yeah, let's get that game rescheduled. I don't. I still don't understand why it's not on the schedule right now. What's the holdup? Well, maybe it was. They're just waiting to see if they could get a game this week. Now that they can't, now lawyers are back in agreements. And we, based on what he told me, 
Maybe it is rescheduled by the end of the week. All I don't right. know. All right, let's see let's it. Let's do it, man. Show, show me the money. Let's do it. All right, coming up, why uh, BYU should shoot for a 12-game schedule. Man, is that even possible? And more on the Big Ten returning to football and the impact it will have on BYU specifically. This is BYU Sports Nation. This segment of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management. The best of BYUSN airs Saturdays at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific on BYU Radio, assuming that we had best of content. We have so far. That's the good news. There's also a a podcast feed featuring the best conversations and interviews each week. Check it out. BYU Radio. He is Jerem. I am Spencer. This is BYU Sports Nation. Stuart Mandel, the editor-in-chief, rather, for the Athletics College football coverage, will join us tomorrow to discuss BYU's place in the ever-changing national landscape of 2020 football and uh, how the Cougars' ranking might just be affected by the return of the Big Ten. Let's whip it! Brought to you by Visible Supply Chain Management, tackling America's most challenging shipping problems. The Big Ten announced that it will begin play on October 23rd. What's the biggest impact on the Big Ten's return for BYU? Fewer spots in the New Year's Six, which makes the dream a little bit harder to see, even through the blue goggles. So they are blurry blue goggles now that the Big Ten is returning. Like water filled up in them or something. It would legitimately take BYU. We were thinking, like, if you're ranked in the top 12, now it's like you got to be ranked in, like, the top eight to be in consideration. Well, it's undefeated or bust, and even then it wasn't going to be a guarantee, right, as an independent. So, yeah, it, it, it hurts, but overall as a college football fan, I'm excited to watch the Big Ten play this fall. Absolutely. The Pac-12 is now the only Power 5 conference to not have a plan in place for returning to football in 2020. How long until that changes? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if they'll play at all. It's certainly different in California and Oregon with COVID. That's an understatement. Not to mention the fire. So they're dealing with a lot. Ah, I hate it for the likes of Oregon and USC, those traditional powers. Yeah, you, you didn't mention a certain school there. Well, I'm not uh, going I, to either. I noticed that. Eh, you didn't, you didn't say, man, I feel bad for Oregon State and Wazoo. <laughs> I do feel bad for all of the players. I really do. Yeah. It's just such a bummer that they're Gosh, watching Arizona, everybody else play. Terrible. They're watching everybody else play. Yep, that would stink, right? That would stink, uh, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. They said their most aggressive return plan puts them in mid-November. That's the most aggressive. ESPN's updated uh, football power index gives me a 5.4% chance of making a New Year's Six bowl game, Spencer. Too high, too low, or just right? Um, honestly, I think it's too high because I think this, <laughs> I think this will be modified now because the Big Ten is officially returning. Yes. Like tomorrow, so now what, 1%? Tomorrow, the FPI will be readjusted with those 14 teams and six preseason top 25 teams back in the mix. So, yeah, it probably cuts in half, like 2%, 3%. No one talks New Year's 6 after 1-0 like BYU does. So uh, Happy to carry that banner. Yeah, 0.8% or something. I don't know. I, I, even if BYU goes undefeated, yes, the schedule's weaker, there's, there's a shot. It's still not going to be a guarantee that BYU gets in. We're going to feel like 96 or 01 if that happens. We deserve a chance! Hey, remember how the NBA playoffs are still happening right now? Oh, yeah, that. The Denver Nuggets. The Denver Nuggets. Yes! Beat the Los Angeles Clippers in Game 7 last night of the Western Conference Semifinals. They're now in the West Finals against Los Lakers. We were down against the Jazz three games to one, came back and won. Down against the Clippers three games to one, came back and won. That's incredible. Jeremy, was there any joy in watching former Aztec Kawhi Leonard of the Clippers go out? No, I'm not anti-Kawhi. I'm not like crazy pro-Kawhi. But the, the relationship with San Diego State is not like the one with Gonzaga. Gonzaga, I root for Gonzaga actively. I don't root for St. Mary's. I, I'm fine if they lose And you don't root for San Diego State? I, I No, but I'm not full of vitriol with them. Like Utah and Utah State. Utah State, I'm like, fine, go ahead, win when you're not playing BYU. Utah, if they lost every game, every season, I'd be fine with that. <laughs> Me and Max all agree on this. <laughs> I have no vitriol. That's the word of the day, apparently, for Kawhi Leonard. I like Kawhi. I've always respected his game. I've always been, I mean, I've been super impressed with his emergence in the NBA. He's just gone full on megastar. Yeah, he's been incredible. Been amazing. So, no, I, I didn't think about that really at all. I mean, whenever I watch him play, I'm like, oh, yeah, San Diego State, Jimmer, Kawhi. Huh, that's cool. And most of the time, Jimmer got the best of him. But honestly, I, I just wanted to see the Clippers and Lakers play. I thought that would be an intriguing Western Conference final. I, I did too. And now the Clippers continue their streak in professional sports. 
of the most seasons without making the conference finals. Oh, man. They have never made the conference finals. I was more disappointed in not seeing the Lakers, Clippers, Western finals that right. have been predicted by basically everyone. Yeah. Nug- Nuggets overcame losing in Game 7 last year to the Blazers, too. Winning two Game 7s. How about that? What is that into Jamal Murray? Incredible. Canadian. Gregor Bell would say that. Yeah. Okay. Coming up. A win for complaining parents. And how important is it for BYU (laughs) to get 12 games scheduled? Can they even do that? Here we go. Yeah. This is BYU Sports. Lay it out, bro. We got all the answers here. Tom, call us if you need them. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. For Cougars sports highlights, interviews, and archived content, subscribe to the BYU TV Sports YouTube channel today. Also, each Friday we put out what's called a Cougar Classic. It's a recap of a classic game on our YouTube channel as well. If you want to watch those, they are there on a playlist. If you haven't joined it already, what are you doing? What the heck? Like, do it. There's 2.45 million of you subscribed to uh, Studio C, so let's get on that with BYU <laughs> TV Sports. We need the teeny boppers to get in on BYU TV Sports is what Is that the demo? That, that, okay. That's what needs to happen. Noted. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation in Studio B. Yesterday, our BYU TV colleague Dave McCann said BYU football and athletic director Tom Holmo are still targeting a 12-game Wait, game targeting? Schedule. That's illegal. 12-game schedule? Okay. How does that get done? Is it even possible, Jerem? It is possible. Now, let's discuss something here. Playing games is different than scheduling here because BYU cannot control how many they play, but they can on the schedule because like we saw, oh, shoot, you know, COVID cases, uh, people exposed, we can't play Army. Shoot. Okay, I I would include that in BYU has nine games on its schedule, right? It was postponed. So if BYU were to get up to 12, they only have three more openings. They added La Tech, which was nice. We thought there would be games added. Boom. Uh, We're saying there's going to be games added in November. It's pretty obvious. Only one right now. Uh, I'd be shocked if BYU doesn't. So I went through this morning and looked at the possibilities for BYU. Let's assume that BYU can't get a Power 5. If they do, that's awesome. I love that. Let's assume that BYU is not going to get an FCS. They could if they want. They could have one already. Right. I I don't think they will. So there are three group of five leagues playing one of those teams within conference usa isn't playing it's old dominion and then there are other independents not named uh, army that are playing it's liberty because umass and yukon and new mexico state have chosen not to play so we now have liberty plus conference usa sunbelt and the american i look through and see who has november 7th 14th to 28th available let's go November 7th, there are three. We've talked a lot about one of these. UCF, that'd be sweet, right? That'd be the best game on the schedule, hands down. Marshall and UAB. I like all three of those. Okay, November 14th, Charlotte, former FCS team, now FBS. And then November 20th, obviously Army, Marshall, Liberty is available as well. So there are games to be had. Massive asterisk here. Tom has tweeted about this and is waiting for reschedule opportunities for COVID cancellations and postponements as well. I believe that those will come into play. BYU, in theory, I bet has reached – well, I don't bet. Well, I bet. I don't know. But you better believe they've reached out to all those teams about those days. Sure. They have. You know they have, right? We don't even have to ask Tom. Of course he's talked to Charlotte about November 14th because they are available. But I expect BYU to have multiple games in November. I don't know if BYU is going to actually schedule 12, like three more. That'd be sweet. But we'll see, we'll see what they can do. Because you, you're going to play fewer than you schedule. Hopefully you play equal to what you schedule. But that's not the case. BYU is not playing Army Saturday. So get 12 scheduled. Schedule three more. No, no bye weeks except for these two weeks. Let's play all the way through November because you know a game or two will ha- not happen like this week. Well, for BYU to play 12 games or schedule 12 games, for that matter, they would have to add a game on November 7th, November 14th, November 28th, and December 5th. You have to, to go in to December play. to schedule. No, so we're at nine, so you only need to Well, three. nine's with Army. Right. So you're assuming that, army. You're assuming army's on November 28th, right? No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm saying schedule 12, and then if you don't play those games, that's out of your control. My point is, yeah. even to schedule 12, you have to do November 7th, 14th, 28th, and December 5th. Before La Tech, BYU had eight games on the schedule, didn't they not? 
with Army, but they're not playing. Right. They're they're one and zero and I, have seven games like guaranteed. You're, you're Army missing, would you're be miss, nine. You're missing my thinking. Army would be nine. La Tech is nine. Mm. You, Army was number two. Is my you're, math wrong? You're missing my point. Before La Tech, BYU had eight games on the schedule with Army. They had eight games. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, and then La Tech is nine, and then you add three, and then Army's gone. Right. Again, now. again, you're missing my point. Play. Playing or scheduling to play is one thing. Getting on the schedule is another. Scheduling 12, yes. I, I don't believe that BYU is going to try and play the 12 games. Right. So Army because stays BYU, as one of the games. Because BYU didn't play a late August game, they're not playing on September 12th, they're not playing on September 19th now, the opportunities are just fewer and far between. So for, right. I just think, I feel strongly for BYU even to schedule 12, they would have to go into December. Then Okay, great. Like December fifth is that okay, like, is that with the conference championship games happening all that stuff is that even possible? Well, well Liberty's open. Okay, so it would be. Well, sorry, Liberty has a game against Coastal Carolina because Coastal Carolina cannot play for their conference championship because they have stipulations of upgrading from FCS to FBS. This is all. This is yeah, fascinating. Schedule as many as you can, and right now BYU has nine. They will have had nine scheduled. Right. right? They have eight that they in theory seven more that they can still play. That again. That's not within BYU's control. It's not. So I don't worry about, and, and the minutia of the number. Da, da, da. Just add more games in November. And if you go into December 5th, great. If you somehow get a game on December 12th, great. <laughs> None of us will complain about more football in December. I feel like there's going to be another game or two canceled just based on how mm-hmm. things go. And guess what? There's going to be an opponent this season that has to cancel the game like BYU did for Army, and we're going to be like, oh, man, that stinks. But it's not going to be a big game like Army was. There's, I mean, if Houston canceled, that would be disappointing. Yes, that would be very disappointing. That's, that's the only game where I go, oh, geez. Or Louisiana no. Tech. Mm. Mm. Really? You don't look at them as better than Texas San Antonio or Texas State that's re- or Western Kentucky? Relatively, yes. But, like, if, yes, within this scope, sure, yeah, uh-huh. that'd, be, that'd be cool. But I didn't think that until BYU scheduled the game. So now I'm, like, more into that. You know? I know someone that made this movie, so I like the movie more. <laughs> it's like, but before, you wouldn't have liked that movie. You know, that's my point. I'm all for BYU and UCF on November 7th. That can't happen. Like, Marshall. There's no smoke uh, to that fire. Marshall would you know be a I fun mean? game. Match up with the Thunder yeah. for the first time since Chad Pennington. Oh, that game was the worst, dude. The Motor City Bowl. Ugh. Yikes. One, of, one member of our crew was a, a little kid. Was that that game? And yeah. Liberty should happen. Just, what? come on. Liberty is the basis of this nation. We should play the game. A man versus an idea. That would be awesome. I, I do want the fighting Trogdors on the schedule as well, the UAB Blazers. That would be sweet. UCF. Trogdor! UCF. Burninating peasants. My in the inner countryside. ear has been damaged. UCF. It was three years ago. Marshall and Liberty in that order for me, uh, if they can make it happen. And of we, course, and, Army. I and want we the can't be, even be that picky. I'm like, just. Just give me I these. I want the game these. against Army on November 28th. Like, if that gets put back on the schedule, BYU's got two November games now. They've got nine games on the schedule. And then they can add a Marshall or UCF, and, and there's 10. Yeah, let's go. Right. And, again, again, don't tweet at me about this, even though you will because you're not paying attention or listening, and you, you don't sometimes, Cougar Board. Uh, there will be rescheduled games based on COVID. So let's say there's some matchup this week where it doesn't work out. Tom is sitting there actively watching this. He has tweeted about it, that there will be opportunities for viewer to add other quality games. Who knows if Power 5's in the mix there or not. If I'm a P5, I'm not looking to play a ton of non-con per se. Although if you're a contender, you're going to need a non-conference game, you'd think, in the conversation Maybe later in the season, if you win the league you're probably, and you have one or zero losses, you've got a good chance at the playoff. But uh, I would love to see what's going to be out there. So, Cougar fans, it's not just what I tweeted out it's, uh, and, and listed out. It's what teams get postponed that don't reschedule with that team. That, those teams are available. Where's the Baylor-Houston situation that we're going to see this Saturday for BYU? Right. And that one is... Now, that one is an exception to the rule for me because it's like, oh, they could drive, and they both needed a game. There, there's no one the, – the one bad thing about being the only game in the West is, oh, shoot, there's literally, like, no one else within driving range. You know what I mean? Slash, it's, 
in Texas, there are a ton of teams back east. They're just the population started there, so they clumped together and then they spread out as they get further west here. There's no teams for BYU to do that with. But I, I fully expect BYU to get multiple games added to the schedule. Yeah, I, I'd be. In fact, if there's not, I'd be very surprised. For me, it's play ten or bust. Play ten. You can make that or happen. bust. Play ten, and it, that might include a bowl game. Like play nine in the regular season, play a bowl game, ten games, awesome. Are we? We still don't know anything about bowls, by the way. No. It's pretty incredible that they haven't at least said something. Which is why I love the idea of BYU going back to the Holiday Bowl and taking over the Pac-12 spot there. I'm going to be really fun. That'd be great. Listen, the playing is a win, but now that we're playing, you have to go win. So schedule more teams, get more wins, and let's see if it can't be a, a fun, interesting season. And, uh, you know, it wasn't going to be fun originally, but now we're at least playing. BYU sitting on 1-0 and for two straight weeks, almost three. And uh, they're going to come back to the Lavelle Edwards Stadium, which is pretty cool. BYU's playing a home game next week, man. With fans. With fans. If you got a ticket, man, that's special. I'll be at 6,000, but fans Six? will be in attendance hey. at the BYU home opener. Okay, coming up, how the Denver Nuggets provided potential general conference material for me. And a massive win for complaining parents. <laughs> you did it! This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation's Rise and Shoutout is presented by Mountain America Credit Union, guiding you forward. BYU Sports Nation continues with this daily reminder. Our show is available anytime on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. We download the podcast. You can Google BYU Sports Nation podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review. I think our podcast yesterday was titled Two Bottles Deep. I didn't listen, spoiler <laughs> alert, but I saw that title and thought, whoa, where'd that go? Nice. It caught your attention, right? Yeah, that's, that's the idea. <laughs> Our question of the day, how important is it that BYU plays the Army game this season? Say it like Reese Davis. How important is it that BYU plays the Army game this season and why? At Y for Life 1984 answers on Twitter. Depends on Army's and BYU's ranking on November 28th. 28th. If neither are ranked, it won't mean much if they don't play. If they are ranked, then rescheduling the game is a must. Well, you're not going to be able to sit there and watch the polls and then be like, okay, add it. So, yeah, no, I, I see what you're saying there. Ugh, that opportunity was lost, and it's gone. And I, I still think that's a game BYU should play. I think it's a respectable ranked game. Ranked or not, they've never played. Go play the game. Go to West Point. Do it. There's not going to be a ton of other teams that you would go, mm, that's a better game than Army. So here's the thing. So I, and I just had this thought uh, during the break. If Army, Wait, I was yelling at you about mountains during the break. You were thinking as well. Well, I can multitask. That's great. It's amazing. My wife tells me that all the time. If BYU or Army mm-hmm. are ranked, either, one of the two, yeah. are ranked on November 28th. Okay. That'd be awesome for either. Does CBS have an SEC game on November 28th? Because I'm isn't guessing that, that's rivalry week. Is that the week that they... Is that rivalry week this this schedule Typic- this year? This Typically, schedule. that's uh, the Iron Bowl that weekend. Because so. if it's not, if it's so, let me t- Yes, it's the Iron Bowl. Okay, it's well, also the Egg okay. Bowl. It's also Kentucky, Florida, LSU, A and M, Tennessee, Vandy, and Georgia. Southern. Hey, have fun so, on CBS College Sports. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Well, that, that's Army's TV deal. They have their own TV deal with CBS Sports Network. Right. Yeah. I was hoping that maybe it had been accelerated because the schedule's smaller nope. and that the Iron Bowl would happen on November 21st. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Roll Tide, War Eagle. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's not happening. <laughs> good Good try. Enjoy the 15th row <laughs> on the slate well, for that day. Well, and the Big Ten. The Big Ten's going to be playing a bunch in rankings, and I, I don't know that it's likely that either are ranked. Who knows? Maybe BYU. Right. The Big Ten doesn't have an agreement with CBS, though. So, so if BYU and Army could maybe sneak in there on November 28th. Right. Right. Well, That's little not, known conference it's not going to happen. Yeah. Not going to happen. Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort from at Newman, BYU on Twitter. Hello, Newman. It's important BYU plays, period. If Army wants to skip BYU, so be it. We say slough in Utah. CBS was a bigger loss than not playing Army. <laughs> That's a good point. I, I think I think this is Nick Newman, who I went to middle school with. I think that's a good point, Nick. I trust Tom Homo and play on BYU will. It will all work out. I think so, yeah. Okay, today's Rise of Shoutouts presented by Mountain America Credit Union, guiding you forward. Uh, mine goes to the Denver Nuggets. Uh, you know, if I'm never going to be asked to speak in general conference, but if I did, I would say something like this. Um, may we all seek to be better, to return, to come back in our lives, even as the Denver Nuggets did twice. 
is my prayer. Wow. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> wow. Nice job, Ben. My rise and shout-out goes to the complaining parents in the Big Ten. Karen. You did it. You complained so loudly and created such a Twitter mob and social media mob that you got the Big Ten back playing college football. You did it. Good job, Karen. Congratulations, Big Ten parents and players. Our thanks to today's guest, Ken McMillan. Right to us, Pitta, Weiner. <laughs> For Jeremiah Spencer, shout-out to Lenny Gomes. See you tomorrow. Pumping.